Um, so like, like Chris sort of explained in the last talk, um, classical numerical methods for differential equations tend to select um, the time step adaptively. So um, they usually do that with the aim of um, keeping the global error within some, some sort of preset threshold. And then, so, so the, the, this is quite good, but it means the, um, the number of evaluations of the gradient field, um, so like the, the right-hand side of your differential equation, um, can't really be sort of controlled. And if you have a fixed computational budget, then, for example, perhaps the, <coughs> perhaps the gradient field is a black box, then, um, then adaptive step sizing is not necessarily practical. Um, so in this fixed budget setting, a uh, probabilistic numerical approach um, may be more appropriate because it allows um, for the uncertainty to be um, to be explicitly modeled in sort of a, a, stati a statistically rigorous uh, manner. So um, we, we propose a probabilistic numerical method for solving uh, nonlinear partial differential equations in um, in particular initial value problems. So um, so th this is still a work in progress. It hasn't been published yet, but I'm just going to sort of introduce um, some of the ideas that um, um, behind this the, um, behind this method and what we've done so far. So. So first, we, we, we give a review of the proposed method in the case of linear PDs. So um, this is similar to the method illustrated in Oksana Chabretti's paper um, in published in 2016. So this, um, so consider uh, an initial value problem one on one D spatial domain. So you've, you've got this um, DU um, uh, differential operator D acting on uh, a function U. Um, so, so, so u is the um, a quantity of interest is the function you want to solve for, and this is a function of time and space. And then you've got some um, uh, initial condition here. So, um, so the main idea is you want to define a Gaussian process prior on u. Um, so the idea is then to update this prior sequentially via um, evaluations of a gradient field, um, because the because um, we have a linear PD. Um, and therefore D is a linear operator. Um, the updated distribution is still a Gaussian process by, the f by just the well-known fact that, that um, linear operations um, preserve, a Gauss uh, preserve a Gaussian process. So, um, so if you imagine um, you have a prior on U and then you sort of update your evaluations of the gradient field sequentially, eventually um, after you've updated all the points, um, you'll get uh, a sort of a, a posterior uh, Gaussian process that you can um, do inference with. So, um, so in, in order to dis discretize the problem, we want to um, estimate the solution on, on a grid of points. So, um, so you have um, sort so of n time points as well as um, n <coughs> spatial points, and you sort of want, want to um, estimate the solution on this grid. Um, now, th this is somewhat difficult to work with because um, the kernel, um, so if you, if you define a, um, um, a Gaussian process on this grid, then, um, then the kernel is essentially a function of four variables because, um, because you've got a pair of points, but each point has a time and position coordinate. So, um, so if you, you so if you have a kernel matrix, then that would be four dimensional, which is not ideal. Um, so to get around this, we have to order the points um, lexical graphically. Um, so what lexical graphical uh, lexic le the lexical graphical ordering is is um, so so basically for each t um, so you you start with um, so time equals um, Time equals zero, and the, the, the position also at the at the first point. So, and then, and then for the first time point, you list down the um, all your positional points in order. So, for example, so you have t zero x one, t zero x two, t zero x three, all the way up to t zero x n. And then after that, you start with t one. So you have t one. Um, x1, t1, x2, t1, x3, 
M and so on. And, and you do this until you have the entire grid, basically. So here you've got, um, uh, your V, your V, which is like, um, your, uh, sorry. Um, Yeah, so 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 so, so essentially the you, 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 so v v sort of denotes um, the, the 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 first index of v is the time coordinate and the second index of v is the space spatial coordinate and you sort of just re um, ordering that in terms of this um, um, in terms in in terms of this index of w which happens to be um, the the lexicographical order. Um, so once you have when once you sort of order the the points lexicographically, you can then reduce um, the kernel matrix to uh, a, a two dimensional matrix, which is um, um, easier to work with. So, for example, if you have a space time kernel sigma, that's a function of T and X. Um, so here I've so I, here I, I defined it in terms of two separable kernels, one one in terms of time and one in terms of space. Um, but you you don't necessarily have to do that. This is just sort of a a, <coughs> a convenient choice. Um, and then so sort of you can sort of see then you can um, so if you want to evaluate uh, the kernel matrix on on these set of points, then um, you sort of, and then there, there is sort of a clear way to order them um, lexicographically. Um, so now, now we've defined the kernel matrix, we can update the Gaussian process via the, the usual sort of conjugate formula. Um, so here, here M is meant to be the mean of the um, Gaussian process. So, um, so, so M to the M of I plus one would mean the, the mean of the Gaussian process at um, the I, I plus one iteration. So basically it's, it's, it's after you've, you've updated um, the Gaussian process I times. So you, you fed, you fed it um, I evaluations of the, um, of the gradient field. Um, so the, the M without the, su the suffix here is, is the, the prior, which um, usually we just take a zero, but it, it can be um, something else if you so choose. And then, and then the, 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 this is basically just uh, the usual formula. You've got, um, you've got your matrix M you have to invert, which is just um, um, uh, um, uh, a matrix of the um, uh, of the covariance kernel. Um, so so D here um, D here denotes um, derivative with respect to um, the left variable. So um, so if you if you have a D, that means um, you're differentiating um, with the the whole differential operator of the differential equation with respect to the left variable, and D bar means you're differentiating with respect to the right variable. So um, so yeah, so so if you haven't seen um, the sort of derivatives used in um, update in updating Gaussian processes before, it's it's basically just the the same formula as updating um, information on the on on the actual Gaussian process, except that you have to add a derivative. So here, for example, you have um, a matrix where where West where the sigma doesn't have the derivative here, then that, that's because this co corresponds to the initial condition. So the initial condition you already know, so you don't have to. Um, um, so it's 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 not the. Um, sorry, you, for, for the initial condition, you're 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 just updating on on the value of the um, of the actual quantity you want, which is u, because you already know um, the initial condition. Whereas um, for the gradient field, you have to add a, a derivative here, um, because you're evaluating on the uh, you're conditioning on the derivative. Of the um, quantity of interest. Um, so, in inverting this m plus one matrix, it, you can see it's, um, it's fairly expensive because it's an i plus one times m by i plus one times m matrix, um, and this is basically because you're you're solving for PDE, and therefore, um, so so at, at each iteration, you're you're, you're sort of um, you're moving forwards one step in time, but for each step in time, you have to um, uh, condition on all the um, 
so all the positional points for that time. So um, so the, the, the size of this matrix grows quite fast as you sort of move forwards in time. Um, so to get around this, um, you, you can show by induction that, um, in fact, there, there is this relationship between m i plus one and m i. Um, so so the, this is basically just the, the sequential version of the algorithm where you get if you, um, if you updated um, your information sequentially rather than here, which is, um, which is sort of like the batch version. Um, but the, but the, the point is that, that these two methods are equivalent and in here um, you only have to invert this matrix which is only m by m. So, so vi is just um, every positional point at time i. So, so this would be ti x1, ti x2, ti x3 and so on. Um, and, and therefore there, there's only m points here so it's an m by m matrix. Um, and also um, ju just so that's a side note, all these formulae can be um, used for ODEs as well. You just have to imagine you only have um, one point, one new point for each um, so new time point you're moving across rather than n um, n points. And in that case, then this is just the scalar. And, um, so so the, 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 this um, inverse matrix here is actually just a scalar. So the, there's actually no need for matrix inversion at all. Um, so, um, so here's like an experimental toy example. So, um, so consider the one <coughs> one-dimensional heat equation on um, x on the on the unit interval, um, and then with these boundary conditions, namely, um, um, namely u equals um, sine pi x here, um, you can show via the separation of variables that um, this. Um, this can be analytically solved. So th this is just a toy example where we can sort of verify the, the, the solution easily and see how, um, how our algorithm performs. Um, so the, and, and the reason this is analytically solvable is because this is um, exactly equal to the first um, positional eigenfunction of this problem. And so, um, and so the, 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 the solution is basically just um, um, the the um, the um, the time eigenfunction multiplied by the by the sp by the by the first spatial eigenfunction. So um, so this is like what the, the the solution looks like. So this is at the the third time point. Um, so the, 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 this is kind of uh, like a snapshot of the solution. So the, this isn't the entire solution. If we were to <clears throat> plot the entire solution, you would be a a, play, a, a 2D plane one. Um, with one axis in time, the other axis in in space. So this is just like um, like a snapshot where you take a fixed value of t and you see how the solution performs. And you can sort of see here the um, it is quite promising. So um, so the red line is meant to be the true solution, and the black lines are are meant to represent the samples from the posterior. Um, there is meant to be a, a mean of the posterior here as well, but they it sort of overlaps. A, so much with the red line that you can't see it. So it, it, it sort of shows that the, um, the method is quite promising, um, at least when you when you just um, when you sort of just um, look at it at, at the first glance. Um, right. So yeah. So yeah. So so the, this is just um, so for 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 the kernel we we've chosen a, a separable kernel where. Um, the time kernel was chosen to be matern three over two, and the position kernel uh, matern five over two. Um, so the re reason for this is just because um, we know from the differential equation that the solution should be sort of differentiable once with respect to time, and differentiable twice with respect to position. And so um, a matern three over two kernel is exactly differentiable once, and a matern five over two is exactly differentiable twice. So it is sort of incorporating some information in a sense that you're sort of assuming the minimum amount of smoothness. Obviously the, the, the true solution is more smooth than that, but it is sort of, um, but for, for prior way, we, we just chosen like the, the minimum amount of smoothness necessary. Um, but in, in terms of a, um, actually um, to assess the, the performance of the algorithm, um, um, beyond just just sort of, sort of looking at how your your posterior samples 
uh, perform. Um, we, we sort of look at two statistics. Um, the first is the maximum error of the posterior mean. So here you have um, sort of the, the mean of the posterior solution. Um, and this is meant to represent, the, the U star is meant to represent the true solution. And you maximize this over the whole, the whole domain. <coughs> Um, so in, in practice, we just um, approximate this by uh, maximizing uh, this quantity over the n times m grid. Um, so if you remember, there were n time points and x, um, uh, so sorry, and, and, and m um, positional points. So, um, so the, this, this is just like kind of like a Monte Carlo estimate. Um, we also use a second statistic, which um, assesses the sort of the, the, the posterior spread. Um, so the, 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 this is like um, like the maximum Z score, where at the top you have um, the, the top you have the, the the absolute error between the mean and the, the true solution again, but the bottom you have the, the square root or the variance at each um, um, at each point, and again, this is estimated by simply taking a maximum over the um, over the n times m grid. Um, so here we have the um, the, the log L infinity error against the the, the log time solution, um, the, the the log time resolution. So if, so on, on the x axis you have um, the logarithm. Of the um, of the time resolution, so the the, the time resolution is just um, um, basically how many it's it's the one over how many times you run the um, well it's proportional to one over how many times you 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 run the um, algorithm, and um, and you can sort of see that um, as um, resolution decreases, you have like um, um, you, you have like a linear relationship between the the error and the um, um, and the resolution, which is quite promising. So um, as the resolution increases, the the error increases linearly, and vice versa. Um, and then the the different lines um, represent the different values of n. So obviously, we're 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 solving for PDE. So um, so there is like the the spatial re resolution to worry about as well. So so this is just to give you uh, different lines for the um for for how many time for for how many um different points you have on the spatial axis and you can sort of see that as um the more points you have on the spatial axis the 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 less error you get as well which is again um <coughs> what you would expect um so the, 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 this is kind of the same thing but the other way around so um so now on the x axis you have um the, the log x resolution and um, the legend here now represents um, so sort of how many time points you use, and again it's, it's sort of um, so the, the error doesn't decrease as much with the um, with, with the, the spatial resolution with, with the increase of the um, spatial resolution, but um, but it, it, it's still in a pattern you you you'd expect. So as the um, position. Um, as you take more time and, and, and spatial points, the error sort of decreases. Um, so this is a maximum Z score against the log time resolution. So, um, so basically, what we want from the Z score isn't really um, any pattern here. So you can see that the, the pattern here is a bit chaotic. But um, but what, what we're really looking for here is is just for the Z score to not take. Um, so sort of any any too large or, or too small values, and, and in this and in this case, you can see that it's um, it's within reasonable values. So 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 the Z score ranges from about one point five to two point two. So it's um, again it's sort of um, fairly reasonable results. Um, and again, is this is the same thing, but against uh, the um, the space. Um, the space resolution rather than the, the time resolution. Um, so beyond this, we can actually generalize this method to um, to nonlinear PDEs. So um, so I, I won't go into detail about this because it is still sort of like a, a work in progress. But basically, the main idea is that you want to linearize um, um, the, the the differential operator, and and then you sort of 
um, and via linearization, you you then sort of um, obtain an approximate solution where you sort of treat this as a linear problem, but um, and then you you still update everything the same way um, using the Gaussian process updating formula, but sort of on on an uh, approximate different uh, linear linearly appro approximately linear um, differential operator. So in this case, you have uh, a Berger uh, a Burgess equation, which is just um, it's like a, a generalized heat equation where you've got this additional nonlinear term in the middle, um, and then and then again you can show on the <coughs> uh, with these um, initial and boundary conditions that you you can again solve. In, in this case, you can solve this equation analytically. So th th this gives us another nice example where we can easily um, assess how our algorithm does against the true solution. Um, so again, you have um, so 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 this is again the the L infinity um, error against the the log time resolution. So you 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 can sort of see the the same sort of pattern where um, the um, the error decreases um, linearly as you increase the the um, the number of positional point. Uh, sorry, as you um, as the the time resolution decreases. Um, as the logarithm of the time de resolution decreases, um, the logarithm of the infinity error also decreases roughly um, in in a linear relationship, and then um, roughly this. Um, so for the for the space for the spatial resolution, this time it doesn't actually look like um, um, the 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 error changes very much as you um, increase or, or decrease the um, positional resolution, but um I guess that, that that might that might have be having that that might have something to do with how we're linearizing the operator so that um that's something we we're um, going to look into further um and again you have the the max um z scores against uh, um the 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 time resolution as well as spatial resolution and you can still see the the, the z score um is within sort of reasonable values, and there there isn't anything um, um, terribly alarming about um, results. Okay, yeah. So so that that that's the end of the slide.